What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Trading Wars. Today, I'm going to be looking at a trading strategy around inside bars. We're going to be talking about what they are and how to use them. So if you're ready, let's step into the war zone. All right. So what is an inside bar? So in trading view, there's this free indicator that I recently found um, that helps you easily to identify inside bars. And I'll show you guys how to pull it up. So you just go in here and you type in inside bars. So the one I like is inside bar indicator slash alert. And it's just called inside bar CMA 930 uh, likes or reviews. I, I don't know what that number is. But anyways, this is the one that I like. Um, but you don't need the, the indicator to find them on the chart. You just need to use your eyes. I find it easier to have it there just because it's, it's just easier to have it pop up in a different color. Um, so mine are set to blue. So you can see all the inside bars that I have are blue um, and they have this arrow above them. All right. So an inside bar is a bar. So it's a candle that is within the previous candles range. Okay. So you could see um, using Tesla as an example. So this is October 23rd. We had this big red um, bar selling right off at the open. And then the next candle we had in blue was inside of this range. So whenever we have a candle inside of the previous range, we call that an inside bar. Um, and then the, the, coincidentally, the very next candle was inside of the previous bar. So in this case, we had a double inside bar, uh, which is pretty rare. You don't really usually see back to back. But in this case, we had um, uh, this bar inside of this bar and then that bar inside of the previous bar. So that's what we call a double inside bar. So quite simply, it is when a bar is within the previous bars range and it matters because it represents a period of consolidation, right? So this bar on the lower time frame is essentially a flag or some type of consolidating pattern. It could be a flag, it could be um, a triangle, it could be a pennant, it could be um, many other different forms of consolidation, but it's a period of rest in the market. And whenever we have that period of rest in the market, basically we are expecting from the rest for there to be an explosion, acceleration, because the rest allows new buyers and sellers to position themselves for the next big move. So every market will have a period of consolidation and a period of acceleration. So the inside bars help us get onto the acceleration before it occurs. All right. So how do you actually trade the inside bar? So there's many variations to trade it, but in general, I like to trade inside bars in the direction of either the ignition bar or where traders are trapped. So if we look at this um, particular setup in Tesla, we could we say we had this big um, red bar followed by a inside bar. And then the second inside bar after that was a long wick hammer. So this would be an example of the ignition bar, what I like to call it, showing me clearly that the buyers are stepping in. So this hammer, this wick gives me the direction. So how you would trade it is you would enter above the high with a stop below the low and um, you know take it for whatever targets you want. In general, I like to go for at least 1.5 to one, um, but most, most often than not, um, anything above one will give you a profitable result. Right. So the win rate on this strategy, it varies from stock to stock. So before you implement it, you should definitely do some back testing on that particular stock or instrument to see, you know, how likely is it to work and write your rules down. I like to go, like I said, for 1.5 to risk reward, at least aiming for two most of the time. So it depends on the size of the candle. Um, but in general, this is a very great strategy because it's it can be used on any time frame, And I'm going to show you guys examples on Tesla, Microsoft, and Apple, where we look at all different time frames and we look at winning and losing trades. Um, in general, every strategy in the stock market, when once you guys really start trading for a long time, they're going to come back to being around 50-50 over a period of time. It might have a very high win rate for one month or for a few weeks, but everything generally comes back to 50-50 because the market works in cycles. And when one style is working, another style won't. And then that style will come back in. And the reason why is because the market is always moving through different phases. 
it's moving through consolidation, through acceleration, um, through tracking traders, through breakouts. So that's why everything comes back to 50-50 win rate. So your job as a trader is to take the same trades consistently, have your back test and know what your win rates are and trade through your ups and downs and make more money than you lose. And it's that simple. All right. So let's look, let's get into um, the trades and look at some examples. So the first one, like I said, so I'm looking at Tesla on the hourly chart. We had this double inside bar. We had the hammer entry above the high stop below the low. That's 2R. Um, and then I'm going to just keep going through these really quickly. So uh, and we have another um, setup here on the hourly chart on Tesla again. This was on the 21st of October. We had this mid Bellinger band, which is the 20 EMA coming um, down. So we could see that this market was in a downtrend. And we pulled back into this 20 EMA, which usually acts as resistance. And then we had one wick and then a second wick with an inside bar. So that was also a great opportunity. We short right below the low, stop above the high. And then um, we could take it right into the close. That would have given us about 1.2 R right into the close. And I don't recommend holding these inside bars for like as swing plays, unless they're on bigger time frames. They're usually, you just want to get in and out, make a few bucks and then disappear. Um, they're really, really good for that. Here's another example where we had a long wick, another long wick. So we could clearly see the buyers were in here. This is your inside bar, entry above the high, stop below the low. Here's another example, wick, wick, entry below the low, stop above the high, another little winner. Um, and then in, here's an example of when we have a loser. So we entered here and then unfortunately it rolled over. So it's not gonna work all the time, but um, you know, a 50-50 win rate is actually gonna make you money in the stock market. And that's something that you have to get used to is actually getting used to being, um, you know, losing, losing happens. Um, but make sure the losers are small and the winners are bigger. And here's a great example. I really like this one. We have a big red bar followed by a long wick inverted hammer entry below the low stop over the high. That's a great short as well. And then here we have an example of, of something that uh, wouldn't work. We have this long wick, long wick. We see buyer stepping in. We have an inside bar. We enter about the high and then immediately we get stopped out. So that happens too, guys. All right. So be aware of that. Here's another example right here. In this case, we had a long wick, but then the second uh, in the bar that came after the inside bar, it closed um, near its lows. And anytime we close near the lows, we're likely to follow through to the other side. So we could see again, we had this nice sell off. Here's an example again of um, the long potentially not working, which is fine. And then over here, we had a, another example of a nice long wick. And um, depending on where you put your stop loss, um, you could add a winner or loser. So if you decided you want to put your stop loss at the high of the day, or if you wanted to, you know, go halfway through the candle, like I teach in some of my other videos, you could have potentially had a little scalp. So these are just great ideas for you guys to take, um, and build a strategy around. I'm trying to give you the tools here that you can use. So, you know, one example could, you could say is, okay, I want to, you know, short inside bars that are up against the 20 EMA in a downtrend, right? Or I want to buy inside bars outside the Bollinger Band um, as a mean reversion play. Those are all um, good ideas and that you can put together in a trading plan that you can actually build a strategy for and use. All right, so let's move on to the other chart here. So I have the Tesla weekly and obviously on the weekly charts, you're going to get a lot less um, frequency of trades, but they're going to be a lot more powerful because there's a lot more money involved in a weekly candle. So here we have an example. We look to the left. We had a big uh, green bar and we had a hammer. So we could see the market wanted to go up. We had this period of rest and then we had this breakout right here. So entry above the high, stop below the low. Same thing for these right here. I always like to look left or look at the inside bar itself and explain and try to think who's trapped, what's going on. So if I look at this inside bar, I look to the left. I could clearly see the bulls are in control. We had a little pause. Then we have the breakout right here. Or if I look at this inside bar, I could see that we had shorts trying to short, but this bar closed all the way up here. So I know that once this wick gets taken out, that there's going to be a lot of squeezes um, for the shorts. And that's what we see here as well. Here's another example right here, ignition bar. And here's an example of a potential loser where we have this wick, this wick, and then we get kind of trapped here with this, this short a uh, little wick that tries to fill a short and then it turns around on us. So like you guys see, it's not always going to be a winner, but if we win more than half the time and uh, let's say we're winning on average $200 and losing on average $100, we're going to have, we're going to make profits. 
Um, the next example I have is Microsoft on the daily. So, so, so let's look at this. So we had um, this example here, we had a nice long wick hammer candle followed by an inside bar, which did not break the, um, the low. The next day we gapped up. So here's an example of where this wick that fills, which would be a gap fill, you could play it based on this inside bar concept. You can enter right on top of the inside bar with a stop loss below the low, and that was a great winner. Here's another great example of trap shorts. We could see shorts shorting on this wick, and then we could see this inside bar close basically ready to break this wick. So we could have entered right here, which would have been filled over here with a stop below the inside bar, and that's a nice winner as well. Um, this one is currently playing out. And then up here, we had um, a long wick, a long wick with a potential right here to short. So depending on where your stop loss is, if you had it above here, you would have got stopped out. Um, or what you could have done is if you saw this inside bar here and you wanted to short below this low, you don't get filled the next day, but the day after you get filled on this flush that takes out this, this low and this low and flushes the market down. And then the last example I'm going to look at here is Apple. So this is on the 15 minute chart. So showing you that you could even use this for day trading. Um, so we have this um, big indecision candle followed by a hammer entry above the high stop low. That's a winner. We have another long wick here in the context of an uptrend entry above the high stop below the low. That's a winner. Then over here, we have this flush to the uh, outside of the Bollinger Band. The context is we're still moving up. So here's it's a nice opportunity to get long above the high, stop below, um, stop below the low. That's another winner. And then here's an example of where you could get chopped out, uh, where we have this inside bar hammer, potentially you get filled over here somewhere, and it just stops you out. But that's okay. You just take your loss. So let's say you had three winners, one loser. Then you have the same thing again outside the Bollinger Band, entry above the high, stop below the low. That's another winner. Um, and so on and so forth, guys, right? So um, I hope I've given you guys enough examples to uh, really let the points set in. But basically, to recap again, an inside bar is a bar that's inside the previous bar's range. So it does not break the high or the low of the previous bar. So it represents a period of consolidation. And after consolidation comes acceleration. So the inside bar gives you a chance to get onto the acceleration before it breaks out. Um, and allows you to have a good risk to reward while doing that. So there are great tools to use and um, you should have a full strategy around it though. You know, you're not going to take every single inside bar unless you have a purpose and a reason behind it, uh, which could be many things, could be wicks, could be Bollinger Bands, could be the trend, right? So we could even say something like, well, Apple is a very bullish stock. So I'm only going to buy inside bars to the upside. You could do something as simple as that, but whatever you do, Make sure that you go ahead and do a back test to have the data to prove that what you're doing is right. Like recently, I did one for two years on SPY on the 15 minute chart, and I, I have an effective trading plan that I can use to make money every day. Um, and if you're interested in that, let me know um, and uh, DM me on Twitter and I can share that. But uh, basically, guys, inside bar, very powerful strategy. It's something that's so simple. That's why I love it. It's so simple. Look, the, the bars are highlighted for you. There's no way you can. Um, be subjective or biased. You know, one thing I hate about trading is when people draw like random lines or different trend lines and saying they're going to do the break of this, the break of that, but it's all subjective to the person, right? But this is not because this is rule based. If an inside bar is within the previous bar's range, that's it. So you can easily build a system and validate it through that. All right. So I hope this video helped you guys. Uh, please comment, like, subscribe, show me some love on Twitter as always. Um, and, uh, hope that this really helps your trading journey and thanks again for your time and enjoy the rest of your weekend.